What's good with the YouTube? A Confidence Perspective, your boy Flacco. And your boy Rojo. So today's discussion is going to be a big discussion. We've seen a lot of your viewers asking about the end of hostilities slash peace treaty. Um, so we're going to discuss the effects of the end of hostilities. And what we're going to be focusing on here is, do we think this is going to transcend to the streets? And what are they going to be the effects of it? Uh, as far as going to the streets, man, um, as long as everybody maintains a level of peace and uh, the ability to get along inside a prison, there is a chance that it may trickle out to the streets. I don't really see it, man, because I see everybody is, I mean, your own people, you know, are going to battle over turf and, and business out there, you know, drug dealing, all that kind of stuff. You know, you're going to do that amongst your own rivals from like your own side of the, the fence sometimes, you know. So with two whole sides trying to compete for different things on the streets with nobody necessarily to stand above them with like the, the, the threat hanging over their head that they're not allowed to do anything to or this or that. I still see it happening on the streets, man. And as far as prison, man, I know nobody wants to go back to the shoe. You know, a lot of them guys, they, they've been in them shoes since the, since the 80s. And there's no there's no love in the shoe, man. You're not using the phone, you know, unless your your people are doing pretty good financially and are able to take the time to, to make that trip to Pelican Bay. I mean, the, 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 the Southerners got it worse than the Northerners. I mean, they're all the way down L.A. and San Diego and all that, you know, so. You're not getting no visits. You're not getting barely any canteen. And then they're putting all your stuff in cups. And, you know, there's no movement. There's no good exercise. There's no, there's nothing, man. You get a TV with a couple little channels. And other than that, man, you're just warehoused, man. So, you know, in order, you know, they if there's too much stuff going on with that in prison, eventually they're going to find a way to re-slam people, you know. So I think they'll be able to hold, you know, the, the, what do they call it? End of hostilities? Peace treaty. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. I think they'll be able to maintain that inside a jail just because the opportunities are, man, going from the shoe to a main line, it, it's almost like going home. It, it, you know what I mean? I mean, don't get me wrong. There ain't no women in there, you know, unless you're into them kind of women that have the same equipment as you, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, uh, it's it's a whole different ball game and, and nobody wants to sit back in that shoe no matter what they tell you man so in, in order for everybody to be able to to secure their main lines on both sides and make money for their people and and you know get all their little you know dirt inside they're gonna have to get along and there's no reason not to i mean they have enough problems with losing so many members on each side that you know the 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 no goods as they would call them are, are deeper than they are, you know? So in order for them to continue their, their objectives, each, each respective organization, they're going to have to get along or they're going to end up just sitting in the hole or, or, or they're going to reinvent a different way to do the, the, the validation process where you're just going to be stuck, man. So, you know, in the pen, I can see it, but on the streets, man, I can't really offer any insight right now other than to say it's going to be way harder to maintain things like that on the streets than when you're in firm control in a facility. I don't think they want it, to be honest with you, on the streets. As much as they have all this into hostilities and less conflict, as you know, all the murders that are happening in prison are usually in-house cleanings right now. Yeah. I guess the bull they try to put the bulldogs out there or something, and they got had a big old riot. I'm a firm believer of this, that in order to be united under one organization— one movement, you have to have a common enemy. Yeah. So without having that enemy on the streets, what ends up happening, you start having internal issues. So that's like even when, when the upstate Sudan started to migrate a little bit, out there in the streets, at least the, the northerners and northerners could be united under one plight against the Sudanos, right? Therefore, when you have all this conflict and issues and homeboys coming in and out, you still got that recruiting pool, like I've said. So this is kind of a two-part topic. One, we're discussing... Do we think the end of the hostilities will transpire in the streets? And two, what are the effects of this end of hostilities? Because me and you were just talking, you know, this this peace treaty and everything, it, getting all these high-ranking members back out there on the main lines, it's created a whole different type of atmosphere to where the educational endeavors and attainments that a rather northerner 
who would never be privileged to gain some information is now they're being educated and seasoned out there. Yeah. You know, therefore you're creating a whole lot of more foot soldiers that are stepping out who are committed to assisting the NF. That have a way better chance of doing it successfully than they would have if everybody was still in the shoe. So now you have this, this control mechanism. I always like to use that word to, you got these Northerners and North Daniels, they're just falling in file. And the communication is a lot easier to control these regiments now. Now they have their cell phones up in there. Yeah. They got people that are proing all the time, so there's more communications. So this end of hostility situation is actually affecting both communities drastically. You've seen a, a splurge in violence out there in the streets, a splurge in, in dope cases, and a lot more involvement from, from I keep my ears always to the street. And things are things people are in certain facilities, they're running different county jails now. They've they've changed their whole chain of command structure. It's no longer that okay, this person steps out from this facility and they're in charge of this person. You got people that are communicating to this person, this person, and that person, and the communication is flowing. So activities are better known or being better controlled as they were opposed when they were up in the bay when you have limited contact. Now they got their hands on everything. Yeah. I can't believe the amount of cell phones there are nowadays. I did. I've done four terms, man. I, I never seen one once, man. Uh, I, I was able to talk a guard into let me use one one time in, in San Quentin. But like as far as the inmate having one, I, I never got to see it, bro. That would have been awesome. But uh, yeah, with uh, with everybody leaving the Bay, you know, with the, the whole hunger strike thing and the, and the, the you know, the, everything that transpired from there, all they did was let very, very driven, motivated, well-educated ed criminals from, from the Bay go to the main lines where they're going to be around other guys who would have just maybe just, uh, you know, rode out their little term and done their time and went home and, you know, not bothered nobody or, or, or participated in any kind of, you know, organized activities. Man, now eventually they're, they're going to try to make everybody that they come in contact with you know, like we were talking about in the last episode, be beneficial to them in some form or factor. And, you know, we've heard things like, you know, Flacco, you know, has direct contact with somebody, told him, man, you know, they're taking in 10 G's per yard per, what is it, week or month up there? Month. Some of the yards, just one it's yard. It's like crazy amounts of money that they're generating, man. And a lot of it's facilitated, you know, through the cell phones, obviously, man, but with the with the wisdom and, and uh, what would you call it, uh, the guidance and respect that these individuals that came out of the Bay had that are going to garner everyone's attention and, and make them want to listen and participate in what these people tell them. Yeah, it's a, it's a continuous trend that I'm seeing. And um, where does it go from here? You know what I mean? You know, the end of hostility thing, like per, per, I'm all for peace. If there's no conflict, I'm, I no longer advocate violence. I don't advocate gangs either at the same token. So as far as a street situation, I have a hard time. I mean, there's hom there's homies out there that I know that their brother's been killed, their cousin's been killed, this brother caught life. And for all those sacrifices that have made in this com a senseless conflict, I think it's going to be hard to get these youngsters in line. I've heard certain rumors that within five years or 10 years that they're supposed to, this end of hostilities is supposed to occur on the streets because there's a, there's a monet monetary purpose behind it. But what's going to end up happening with these situations is, what do you think is going to really happen with this, Rojo? Man, the, the, I mean, you're talking about what I see happening in the end, bro. It's what, I, what I'm thinking is, man, I think they're both going to be able to coexist and kind of ignore each other, similar to the way that the Crips and Bloods were able to in that gang truce in L.A. back in the days, man, like. You know, they get into little skirmishes here and there, man, but for the most part, they can, you know, live in the same communities in peace and kind of just to each their own. You know, yeah, you guys got your little area. We got ours. Don't disrespect ours. We won't disrespect yours. And if that's the, the case, I mean, that's great for, you know, overall, the, the, the entire population of, you know, northern or southern gang members in California. But, uh, man, as far as like always being on the streets, dude. I just, I just don't see it. I see it in prison just because it makes more sense to be out of the shoe that in order to stay out, you got to keep the violence down. But last like, man, I kind of, I might even see both organizations working, you know, kind of together, man, against, you know, the other groups like them, them new guys in Northern Riders and them Deuce Fivers and the, the gay boy gangsters and, you know, independent riders and people like that. But, uh, 
man, it's that's a really hard one to call, man, because I never, ever thought, you know, people have asked me, you know, have, has the NF and the MA worked together in the past? And I've always said no, man. But, you know, in, in retrospect, uh, the door policy in Pelican Bay, man, both sides agreed that, you know, the cops are trying to set us up to 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 fight or kill each other so they can shoot us or we could just, you know, contribute to more brown on brown crime whatever and we're not going to play into those kind of you know dirty politics by by a crooked administration you know so in order for that to have happened there had to be dialogue in between the leaders of, of both respective groups so in essence yeah that's working together you know what i mean so yeah we've worked together in the past man and i've man i've been in pods bro where you know our our head our head guy was upstairs talking to their head guy because man I, I happened to be in a pod that that had one of their really high ups in in our high up you know and uh man our guy was the tear tender bro and he'd be at their door whispering and you know what i mean so there was there was things transpiring where you know yes they, they were working together i never looked at it like that before until i just thought about it recently and even on something you know that's a major thing bro i mean that's 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 the end to the on-site nf has to kill ma and vice versa philosophy that's been in place for shit man 52 years minimum we'll just go back to 68 man that's 52 years ago that these things have been going on and nothing can change overnight especially with all the bloodshed man there's been hundreds and hundreds of stabbings and incidents and shootings on thousands man you know so it's not just something that'll go away quickly i mean even i know now that there's people on the main line like man i wish that i wish i could smash on that dude right there that you know, that scrap, that buster, you know what I mean? Whatever sides talking about the other ones and and they can't do it, you know, per policy, man. So that whole feeling is going to take a long time to to dissolve, whether whether it be forced upon you or whether it just be a natural, just be like, well, man, we haven't had no problems with the with the Southsiders per se since when, when did that 2012? When did that start? They, 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 I don't know when they got released. I think like 2015. 2015. Well, let's say so. I could so, be wrong though. Yeah. So let's just, let, we'll call it 2015 for the sake of argument. So let's just say, you know, 10 years from now, you know, uh, uh, the North and South haven't had any problems in prison. You know, their guards are probably already down now. I mean, I'm sure, you know, homeboys are suspicious as far as our homeboys go. We're suspicious, you know, especially if you're a well-trained soldado. You're trained to look at every single thing going on on the yard, and then you're going to report that to such and such, and and it, that that suspicion is going to take a long time to go away. Let me ask you a question though, because we you know how we function: observation posts, security patrols. We're doing counts on every unlock, counting the opposition, filing reports. We do it in a sense to where it's not even in, people know what we're doing. How do you think the opposition is going to feel if we're still conducting ourselves like this during the end of hostilities? Or do you think we're even acting like this anymore? I say we're still acting the same way. And I mean, if I mean, each group's going to do what they're accustomed to doing. You know what I mean? I mean, if say them guys like to play handball every day and our guys like to play basketball, none of that's going to change. I wouldn't think so. We're, we're still maintaining our same level of security, I would imagine, as if anything could pop off at any minute, you know, just like on a regular level three, level four yard. I can't see that changing. Yeah, maybe they might say, hey, be discreet, you know, and try not to, <coughs> excuse me, they try not to engage in like reckless eyeballing, you know what I mean? Because, man, we almost got into it in Susanville just because one person didn't like how another one made eye contact with them. You know, it's something that small that could have set off a... 110 to 90 person riot between us and them, you know, so it's a long time. It'll take a long time for the cycle of, of behavior and animosity to change. But the longer it goes and longer it goes. And if they're allowed to interact and talk to each other, each side's going to realize, hey, man, those those guys are a lot like us, man. We 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 all it's all the same, bro. You know, what I mean, there, there's maybe a different little culture in Los compared to the Bay, a, a lot different culture. But Man, it's it's all really the same, bro. At, at, at when you break it down, at the end of the day, they're two sides to the same coin. Yeah, I always said it, and it trips me out because I think a lot of this started changing because of the communication up there in the Bay and in Corcoran with C's and my family members. Because I remember when I was in Corcoran, we had the same same implementation that the Bay had as far as a, um, 
If the door pops, stand your ground. Unless it was a target. So say if if, if a Sureño did something that was disrespectful and we, we communicated with their people and they didn't want to deal with it, we would have a green light just on that Sureño if the door popped open. Like we had a situation where, where a Sureño ended up signing off a, 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 a canteen that he got that was for another another NF member in the pod. And we got out like, well, hey, that was, you know, they weren't reimbursing the homeboy. And so we're like, well, hey, that was homeboy's money. And then the Sureño was like, well, it's not my fault. The cop messed up. Oh, you know wow. what I'm saying? Yeah, so, I wouldn't expect them to do that either. So we were communicating with them and, you know, trying to get them to give it back. And we put a green light on them if the door popped open. So what ended up happening, the homeboy ended up getting reimbursed, right? But we, we, took, the red, we took the green light off them. And, but I noticed those type of communications were occurring because we also had an understanding, right? You, you're going to trip on this because this is years after you left, that we had a green light on anybody that was not active from any of the other groups. Huh, okay. Whereas years before, we were not even allowed to talk to a Southsider dropout or a white, or, or NLR or AB or any of that. Right. And we had a mutual understanding when someone would come in that was good, we would notify their shot callers. You know what I'm saying? Who at that time for this, I was in the same block with, um, in Corcoran with a uh, MA member, um, Jack, Jekyll, Jack Padilla. And he had a Sudanio who was my neighbor named Walter Gomez, shotgun from 18th Street. So that's who we should do our communications because that was little Jack's little protege, you know. But I noticed that our relationships were more of a respectful level. It was like it's almost like a community thing. And that was part of the the first step when we had the kind of you kind of had a ceasefire up in the bay, but if the door popped with him, you know, what I mean it was a little ended hostilities too. Because you're living in an environment, why can't we coexist like if we are in any neighborhood? I got I got tested, man, on that uh, door pop thing too, man. My my celly was Flacco from Santa Rosa, and he had to go out of court for some child custody thing. So he was down in Sonoma County in Santa Rosa County, uh, Sonoma County Jail in Santa Rosa, or whatever. And uh, so I'm alone for about a month or 45 days or whatever until he came back from his out to court status. But uh, there was two MA members, one cell over from me, man. I come back in from the yard one day, and there was a gunner that wasn't usually working in our block that I hadn't seen. And man, the first door he pops for me to go back in the cell is them two Emmy brothers. You know what I mean? So they just looked at me and they they kind of raised their fist, like uh, you know, to the side. You know what I mean? Like right on. You know what I mean? And uh, I just did the same. I threw him a peace sign and nodded my head. You know, and they went back to writing. And man, they had their backs to me and everything. You know, I was like, and I thought, man, because I, I know they're packing. You know what I mean? And I was like, oh well, <laughs> well they they would have had me. You know what I mean? No doubt. Yeah, it's a trip, man. But I kind of, I kind of can see that. Okay, to the end of hostilities in prison, the more longer it exists, you know, I'm hearing that they're working out together in there. That they're even playing cards. They're spreading. They're doing all this stuff. I've heard this from people who have paroled. Hey, that's more power to them. You know what I mean? And that's so, good though. what ends up happening there? You start to have relationships with people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I know with my vecinos when I was in the shoe for 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 a few years. Like I said, Shotgun from 18th Street was running running things for the, the for the Sureños in there. His silly Danny Boy Martinez, and then Lucky from Winton Gardens. And things had changed from before. We couldn't eat food off of them. We couldn't drink for, off them or anything. You can do that now. You could do that now. <laughs> Shotgun. Hey, okay. If anybody out there is, just came off an of active yard, man, why don't you get at us in the comments, man, and and just tell us, man, are 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 the are they eating together? Like, are they busting spreads? I mean, are they playing handball? Like. Maybe the northern versus the southern. I mean, get at us and let us know, man, your experience if you just got out recently. Bro, Shotgun, Danny Boy from 18th Street, and Lucky from Winter, Winter Gardens. Those were all my vecinos. It was my birthday coming up. They made a patch of Bruno, right, to drink, right, that we drank for my birthday, right? And I was, like, hesitant because I, next thing you know, like, I got poison. Next, thing, <laughs> next thing you know, we're drinking on the tier, right? Yeah. And these guys are like, hey, Flacco, that's some good shit. Oh, that's some good stuff. And I'm like, shh. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so we can't even conduct ourselves. So I had the, I had the, I had the bolsa full, full. I had a, they gave me a big old bolsa of some Pruno rope. And I'm like, hey, I got down to the homeboy drill that was next downstairs to me. Hey, you want, you want some Pruno, bro? He said, shoot that, bro. So they said, I'm shooting him the Pruno just to cover my behind. Yeah, no, you know what man. I mean? So, but back to what I'm saying is. See, in the Bay, they drank with us too, actually. Uh, the homeboy Lutra from Hayward. And we were in there with the Mesa member also. And they shot some upstairs. And uh, 
I, I, I want to say it was an MA and a regular Sereno in the cell. I'm not 100% positive on, on one of their statuses. He, he, he could have been or could not have been. But uh, they drank with us, too, in the Bay, now that I think about it, on September 16th. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Memory yeah. flashbacks, yeah. huh? Yeah. So, yeah, so these communications have been going on for years. And now that I think on, think back on it, the changes, because I remember before when I was down south and, and, and got much of the hole, I was put in the last cell. And when I had walked down the cell, there was 44 Sudanios, uh, two black dudes and one white dude. Wait, two white dudes and one black guy. And I was put in the last cell because I just took off on some dude named uh, a Little Local from Stockton. I smashed on that dude pretty bad. And um, as punishment in the hole, they took me off the, off the tier I was on, which were floors, and put me all the way in this other section to where there, where there was no homeboys. So every time I would be walking down the down the uh, the tier, I was being called Buster, this and that. They're going to get me. And that was back in the 90s. As I got into 2000, 2002, there was more of that respect that was occurring now. And it's been less driven on these main lines because everybody's dealing with their own trash on these lines nowadays. Yeah. So my whole perspective of this into hostilities, now that I look back at it, this was already in the works for years. They had to have been communicating. Someone had to sit there up there and say, look, you know, Pinky, Tibbs, and Corny, all them, Skip, we knew there was going to be no peace treaty with them up there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But well, now, that, that's who was in power when they got the door policy. Yeah, that's true, so, too. So, I mean, really, I mean... There ain't no telling, but yeah, I agree. They're, they they run a little, they're 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 more real traditional. <laughs> they're not none of that new age snowflake stuff out of them, gentlemen. You know. Yeah. So, what do you think this has affected the streets? So, you think there's that much more violence out there, or that much more crime going on because of this? Do you think this has been a good thing for them? I mean, the end of hostilities, peace thing is is good in general, but do you think that this is for going to cause more crime out here on the streets? Man, you know, if there's been a spike in crime, uh, I don't know if I could directly attribute it to that that whole situation in prison, man. I just don't see that these organizations being able to function, you know, alongside of each other, basically, as anything to promote any further violence on the streets. I mean, you would think... I would think it would cause less because both sides would actually have a chance to, t like you said, talk and get to know one another a little bit and realize, man, them dudes ain't so bad after all, you know, contrary to, you know, what we've been taught for the last however many years, you know, it's like I met some MA members and some Serenos that were cool as could be in the Bay, bro. You know what I mean? The, you know, if, if times were different under different circumstances man i'd be kicking it with them dudes man because they were they were so dope as as people but uh i don't see it creating more violence on the streets i would think people would be out and they'd be like well man let's go ride on them be like ah, man yeah, man them dudes ain't that bad man but like you said there's a lot of people of long-standing you know, articles in their history of sacrifice and, and, and lost loved ones and stuff. So it might take a while, but man, I don't I don't see that at this particular time as a reason to for a higher crime rate. No. So so you you're very familiar with with the NF Constitution. So please, for the listeners, have has this new leadership in the state have they committed treason? According to the Constitution, if you want my honest opinion, I would have to say yes. What is that? Uh, we don't, I mean, <laughs> the article two, section five of the constitution states, any familiano who turns traitor, coward, or deserter will receive an automatic death sentence and, uh, making a peace treaty with the enemy would be considered an act of being a traitor. And it could also be considered an act of being a coward. Um, I hate to say that because I, I agree with what's going on. I think everybody should get along. But you're asking me a straight, honest opinion based on that group's policies. Yes, they they're in the wrong according to the to the foundation of their own beliefs, man. So that's a good point, man. You know, but they've they've been in many things that serve for their benefit. I mean, the thing that gets me though is like, you know, who overseen all this was DC. Man, who who overseen the whole door policy was. Tips and Corny and Pinky and Tex and yep. you know Quete whoever you know what I mean, the 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 three generals though they made that could be seen as as a traitorous act too so it's like, you know for the state and the feds to be mad at each other 
you know, yeah, one offense might be greater than the other, but they're both under the same offense category is both be considered an act of being a traitor. You know what I'm saying? So for one to judge the other, and you know, this is a whole nother topic we're going to get into about state and feds, but uh, two wrongs don't make a right. Two rights don't, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's the, you know, it's, I can't pinpoint it, bro, but according to the rules, they're in the wrong, but I'm, I'm glad they broke the rules. It's been a good topic, man. So that said, you know, I'm pretty much out. Please hit the like and subscribe button. This is your boy Flacco. Good afternoon, YouTube. Rojo, holler at you.